Hello, everyone. I'm Robert Pollard from God of My Voices. And I'm Toby Sprout. And welcome to another edition of Wawa. And we're going to show you some videos today, some of ours and some of our friends, and some of the videos we like. And I think we're going to start it off with My Bad Behind a Knife, which was a, a video from our last album, Alien Lanes, uh, produced, directed by Banks Tarver. Okay, we're going to talk about some of our earlier records, which are now unavailable in the original formats, but they, they, you can get them now in a box set, which was uh, released by Scat Records in St. Louis, which was our first label, the first label we were signed to. And the first album was Devil Between My Toes, uh, which we only pressed like 300 copies. And, uh, and, our, and our, I think they're it's pretty tough to find now, aren't they? Very impossible expensive, to find. Impossible to find. And, uh, but you can get them now in the box set. And uh, this is, uh, was I think this is what got us the, the, the lo-fi tag because we, rec we recorded this in 1987, I think. And uh, a lot of it was just recorded live in the basement and some of it in, in, a, in a studio, an A-Track studio of a friend of ours who lived a couple miles away. But uh, what do you think? What do you think of this record, Tim? I, I like this record. Um, <laughs> I wasn't actually in the band yet, but uh, I played on it. And uh, it was one of the first first albums that I heard uh, that Bob played for me, and it, it really was the time when I really started getting interested and guided by voices. I thought that, uh, I was very impressed with it. So up until Devil Twin I My Toes, we were pretty much clueless and aimless, and I think, <laughs> I think this album pretty much defined where we were going. We didn't know, but someone told us that. But anyway, uh, are we going to play anything from this? I don't, I don't think we're going to we're going to do we're going to show you a video right now. Uh, at the time, we were pretty much into David Bowie, and I've been into him for a long time. And uh, we're going to show you a David Bowie video uh, for Boys Keep Swimming. Moving along in the box set is Sandbox, and it was our first attempt at power pop and, and music in a little bit larger vein, but look, better recorded music. And uh, it was still pretty much considered lo-fi, uh, whatever that means. But anyway, what about Sandbox, though? Were you in the band yet by then? I wasn't in the band yet on that, but I, I played on this one, too. And, uh, and it's, it's it, pretty much it's considered to be our worst record, so you might want to pick that one up. Um, and uh, the next video 
is Devo. Who are who, from fellow Ohioans and uh, who I had the privilege to see very early on in the early days at Kent State, and it was uh, uh, pretty crazy. But. And they're very much an influential band to us. Uh, when, and uh, Devo, The Day My Baby Gave Me a Surprise, which was one of my favorite early Devo songs from the album Duty Now for the Future. You're back to smoking in bed with God of My Voices. And, <laughs> and uh, in the box set, our third album, Self-Inflicted Aerial Nostalgia, a title of one of my friends. And uh, it pretty much gets back to the uh, basement taping procedure that we use with uh, Devil Between My Toes. And uh, it's another, we, I think this was the first album where we started, we decided to, to start Use it, put it, including a lot of songs on the album, and I think this song has maybe this album has maybe 18 songs. And uh, yeah, no, me, I, I didn't play on this one at all. This was, I was in Florida at this time. Uh, <laughs> Toby was vacationing in Florida, and uh, this I think we did 500 copies of this. All of our first six albums were extremely limited, and uh, this is some of some of my friends' favorite record. That we, that we did, our early stuff. And uh, the next video is one of the most influential bands for us is The Who. We at one time proclaimed ourselves The New Who, or Noi Who. And uh, the video is for Who Are You? Come on over tonight. We'll put on some cat butt, do it upright. No need to get all caught up. Okay, the next album is uh, self or, uh, Same Place the Fly Got Smashed, which is the album right before uh, I actually joined the band. Um, I just got, I got back from Florida and this album just came out and I thought it was uh, uh, great. Um, it's, it's somewhat of a rock opera. It's conceptual. But uh, again, recorded very cheaply and limited edition. And uh, probably... And it, Probably one of my favorite covers because it looks kind of like a circus poster or something. And this next video is uh, by some good friends of ours, Super Chunk, and it's called um, The First Part. The next record in the box set, and the last, the final record, is Propeller, which, uh, if you have the vinyl version of the box set, it's included, but if you, if you have CD, it's, it's, it's included with, you have to get it with Vampire and Titus. And uh, Propeller was like, I think, the big breaking record for us, and I, I jokingly told my band that we're calling this album Propeller because it's gonna propel us to success. And it was kind of odd, strange, that it did help us uh, get our foot into the door with, with, with what's going on with us now. And uh, it's got, it includes, it was the first record we made where we did a lot of big studio stuff and, and, and four track. We, we started experimenting with, with a four track machine at that time. And, uh, and Toby became a, an official an member official of the band at the time. And that's, and it started using my four track. And, and a lot of people consider it to be our best, our crowning achievement and all downhill after that. <laughs> but uh, anyway, the next video is. What did we say the next video was? It's Tad. Tad. Tad, who uh, started out in the, in the grunge scene with Nirvana and Soundgarden and all the sub-pop bands. And uh, we met Tad in Cincinnati once, and uh, he, t he told us at the time that he, that he would like to eat our bag of weed. And uh, he's a good guy and, and, and really, really plays some really heavy music. So we're back, and uh, we're here to talk about uh, our new album, Under the Bushes, Under the Stars. And that's the reason we're is, over here, just to promote that. Record. That's right. That's why we're here. And it's uh, kind of a, a, a little different album than the last couple of ones we've done. It's more of a band album, and it's it's uh, it's it came to be because we started writing. We started about two years ago. We had to put a band together to start touring, and 
After that two years, we started writing for live shows, and I think this album really shows, um, really transfers well, well to the stage. It's, it sounds like a band album. It's, it's like kind of the first record where our, our recording entity and our live entity meet and become one. So it's, uh, and it's interesting because we, we started to work and became comfortable in, in a big studio, and we worked with some, some people that showed us the ropes, Steve Albini and Kim Deal. And uh, it originally, the title implied small and large. Uh, it was the original, the original record was four, half four track and half 24 track, and now we decided to go with a completely big studio record. And so we decided to keep the title because it has a nice romantic ring to it. And it's called Under the Bushes, Under the Stars, and it should be out in March. I think March 26th is the release date. And I think we're gonna play some- Show the single. Or talk about the single. Talk about the single. The single, the first single from the album is the official Iron Man Rally song. And we'll get, when we get back to the States, we're going to do a video for it. And I think Banks Tarver, who did our first I Am a Scientist video and did My Valuable Hunting Knife, I think he's going to work on the project. So we're pretty, we're pretty pumped up about that. talk about one of my favorite albums of ours which is uh, Vampire on Titus and uh, I think one of the reasons I like it it's uh, it's raw and it's kind of the, when we first started working with uh, getting serious with with four track and uh, it just has a very uh, weird angle to it's it. It's kind of a sad record and it's completely buried in noise so it's something you have to really dig for but it's a good record if you give it time and it was our first record where we were actually signed to a semi-respectable label. We were on Scat Records at the time, and it was our first record with them. And it's called Vampire on Titus, which uh, I'm not sure who the vampire is. I live on Titus. Some people think I'm the vampire, but it's not me. 
And uh, we're going to show a video now by another Seattle band, another sub pop band. We love battery and it's out, out of focus. Our next video on Wawa is. What is our next video? I, I forgot what it was. I, we forgot what our next video is. It's you live with Dave. Oh, that's oh. right. It's, it's, it's live when we played last year, last summer, during the Popcom. Festivals. Festivals or whatever. <laughs> what, is, what is that called? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that, it, that was an interesting experience, and uh, we had a good time. And uh, the most interesting fact about that, after we came out after our show, the streets were completely littered with broken beer bottles, so we felt right at home. And uh, we had a lot of fun. And so let's, let's roll something from that. Do you roll things anymore? We're back again, and uh, we're going to talk about B thousand this time, and it's it's uh, the first entire uh, four track album that we did. Uh, it's probably our most critically acclaimed record. Uh, some again, people, many people think it's our best record, but it is our it is completely four track, and it's uh, it's we rough. It it's, it's yeah, it's it's a rough four track, but. Uh, we, we did the best we could with the four track, which uh, I thought I thought it turned out nice. But, um, anyways, B thousand sounds like B thousand, <laughs> and it, uh, and it was on uh, it was our last record for Scat, and our first record with semi with with Matador, yeah, which is which it started the relationship between Scat and Matador, and uh, a lot of pretty songs on B thousand. Should have, we should have had four or five hits from 2000, but they weren't recorded well enough, too much hiss. <laughs> and and uh, the next video is with uh, some label made of bars, uh, Railroad Jerk. Yeah, we toured with Railroad Jerk, and they're a bunch of good guys, swell guys. And uh, their new, their last album, I think they're working on a new album now, but their last album uh, is really, really a fantastic record. We're up to our last record, and it was our last and our first official release on Matador. It was our last record, Alien Lanes. And uh, it's a really bombastic record, which features 28 songs. I think that might be the record for the amount of songs on one album. And uh, what do you think? And uh, we did a video with, uh, actually did two songs from the album, uh, Auditorium and Motor Away. And, uh, and it was directed by David Kleiler friend of ours from New York City, who does a lot of Matador stuff. And uh, 
I'm going to show it to you right now. And it's, I guess it's time also to say goodbye. Sad. It's been good talking to you, though. And it's been fun being on Wawa. On, is it Viva TV? On Viva TV. Yeah.